What is research? A research study is a systematic investigation aimed at discovering, interpreting, or revising facts, theories, or applications within a specific field. Research involves the collection, analysis, and interpretation of data to answer specific questions or solve problems. A thesis is a comprehensive research document that presents the author's findings and arguments on a specific topic or research question. It typically involves a detailed examination of existing literature, the formulation of hypotheses, and the application of research methods to gather and analyze data. Thesis is to demonstrate a student's ability to conduct independent research, analyze data, and contribute new knowledge or insights to the field of study. It is a requirement in bachelor's degree and is often a requirement for obtaining an advanced degree such as a master's or PhD. Starting the thesis can feel overwhelming, but breaking it down into manageable steps can make this process smoother. So here's a general guide to help you get started. You have to understand the requirements from your institution's guidelines for formatting, length, and structure. This will give you a clear idea on what expected. Then you have to choose a research topic. So you select a topic that interests you and fits within the scope of your field. It should be specific enough to be manageable, but broad enough to define a research material. So then you can come up with a research question. A research question is a precise, focused question that a research study aims to answer. It defines the scope of the study and guides the research process. So this research question should be an open-ended question. It is a type of question that encourages a detailed, elaborate response rather than a simple yes or no answer. These questions are designed to elicit more comprehensive, thoughtful, and nuanced answers, allowing the respondent to provide insights, opinions, or explanation in their own words. For example, uh, what are the most effective strategies for reducing the carbon footprint of new buildings and how do they influence architectural design choices? To conduct preliminary research, you have to gather background information on your topic to refine your research question and thesis statement. This will help you understand the current state of research and identify gaps or areas for further exploration. To write the introduction, start with a hook. Begin with interesting fact, question, or anecdote to grab the reader's attention. Provide the background information. You offer context that helps the reader understand why your topic is important. Then you state the research problem. You clearly define the problem or question your thesis will address. Then you present your thesis statement. You conclude the introduction with your thesis statement which outlines the main argument or purpose of your research. These are components of the introduction in a thesis, which include your background information, statement of the problem, research objectives, and question, rationale, and scope and limitations. To develop a thesis statement, you have to craft a clear and concise thesis statement that outlines the main argument or purpose of your thesis. This will guide your research and writing. And lastly, you have to revise and refine. After drafting the introduction, you have to revisit to ensure clarity and coherence. Make sure it sets up the rest of your thesis effectively. In chapter two, can be read your literature review. Begin with by outlining the purpose of your literature review. Explain why you are reviewing the literature and how it relates to your research question or thesis topic. Define the scope of review, including the main themes, areas, or time periods covered. Also, you have to point out any gaps, limitations, or controversies within the existing literature. Discuss areas where research is lacking, conflicting results, or unresolved issues that your study aims to address.
and you have to explain how the reviewed literature informs your research, show how it supports the rationale for your study, and it helps to refine your research question or hypothesis. You highlight how your research will build on, challenge, or extend existing knowledge. Chapter 3 of a thesis, often titled Methodology, it is a crucial section that outlines the research methods and procedures used to collect and analyze data. It provides a detailed account of how the research was conducted, ensuring that the study is reproducible and the results are credible. You begin by explaining the purpose of the methodology chapter. Describe how the chosen methods align with your research question or hypothesis and the overall goals of your study. Results will be written in chapter 4. So the purpose of this is you have to present the findings of the research, often using tables, graphs, and charts, and a detailed presentation of the data collected, along with any patterns or trends observed. Your discussion should be included in Chapter 4. It interprets the results, explaining their significance in the context of the research problem and the literature reviewed. It includes analysis of the findings, implication for the theory and practice, and potential limitation of the study. Your conclusion and recommendation is in Chapter 5. The purpose for the conclusion is you have to summarize the main findings, reinforces the significance of the research, and suggests areas for future research. By this, it includes the reinstatement of the key results, overall conclusions, and recommendations for further study or practical application. You have to include the references or bibliography. You have to list all the resources cited in the thesis, providing credit to the original authors and allowing readers to locate the sources. It should include a complete and properly formatted list of books, articles, and other materials used in the research. You have to take note we use APA 7th edition as citation guidelines. APA, or American Psychological Association, widely used for writing in the social sciences, education, and related fields. The 7th edition of the APA publication manual includes specific guidelines for formatting your papers, citing sources, and creating reference lists. Here's a link to the official APA style website where you can find detailed guidelines, examples, and resources for APA 7th edition. This site includes a wide range of resources including tutorials, quick guides, and sample papers to help you correctly apply APA style in your writing. By correctly citing research, you acknowledge the contribution of others demonstrate the depth of your own research, and provide a trail for others to follow if they wish to explore the topic further. So how to cite research? For example, end text citations. These are brief references within your text that point to the full citation in your reference list. They typically include the author's last name and the year of publication. Please observe the example below. For reference lists, this is a detailed list of all the sources you cited in your paper, typically placed at the end of your work. Each entry includes the full details of the source. So why do we do citation on our research? Credibility is one of the key aspects of citing research. By citing research, you demonstrate that your work is based on credible and authoritative sources, which enhances the reliability of your findings. We should avoid plagiarism. Proper citation helps avoid plagiarism, which is the unethical practice of presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own. Citing research is a way of maintaining academic honesty. It shows that you have engaged with the existing body of knowledge and are contributing to the scholarly conversation. Citations provide evidence for the claims and arguments you make in your work, strengthening your case. It also enabling verification. Citations allow readers to verify the information you present, track down your sources, and explore the topic further.